Scott from the old Curiosity Shop, welcoming you back to a living room windowsill thrift haul. I have got some wonderful things from the 1920s onward to show you. I can't wait. Let's get started. First, mottos. They are highly collected by uh, lots of collectors. You'll see these out there, and they can sell anywhere from $5 to, oh, <clears throat> $70 or $80. Here's one in beautiful condition. The maker of this is Buzza, B-U-Z-Z-A. Sorry, what I'm trying to do is get this to where you can see it. <clears throat> we even, the Buzza company even, um, uh, there we go. They even embossed the little hook on the back of their frames. That adds a little extra interest to it. Uh, from the 20s, this particular one from the writings of Wilbur D. Nesbitt, and we can see there it's got the copyright. Sometimes there's the date on these as well. But again, we know from the style frame and from the era that these were made that they date from the 1920s into the uh, 30s. It's got the original back, collectors like that, as I said, the original hook to hang it. <clears throat> and the colors are just stunning on that. Mm -hmm. So I'll let you, if you'd like, you can pause right there and read that poem or, or motto, actually. That's a nice one and a large one. And then over here, we've got one not made by Booza, but this was sold by the Cincinnati Art Publishing Company. And how do I know that? Because this thing survived in its original box. Now that is unheard of. Hold on, let me refocus here. Okay. So, uh, may the inspiration given here do much to bring you daily cheer and in its friendly way express true wishes for your happiness. The Cincinnati Art Publishing Company of Cincinnati, Ohio. There's the box. Yeah, okay, just you is the name of the motto or the poem on the inside. Let's, let's take a look at it. There it is. Uh, let me get this up out of here with one hand. I'll tell you what, the original box is such a treat. So there again we have these frames that typically this one is sort of almost stippled and this has the blue painted highlights. This frame over here has green. We are, we're always in the 19, 1915 to about 1935 with these little delicate frames that have the painted, painted uh, highlights on them is what I'm trying to say. So there's a small one. And uh, just, just as sweet as the rose of spring, just as glad as the birds that sing, just as bright as the rainbow's hue, are thoughts I always have of you. Okay, and he's serenading his uh, sweetheart there, whatever she might be. And what's wonderful about this, turn it over to the back. 
Mottograph, how delightful. To Margaret from Laura Jarrell. Christmas Day, 1926. Well, we can't argue with that. I love it. Finding one of these in the original box, that's not that easy to do because these were, you know, they were hung on the wall. So bought in five and dimes in the Depression era. Let's leave that out. I don't know why I covered that up. We have those two for sale. An unidentified little pink Depression glass vase. It's cute. It's not a parfait. You're not going to get a spoon down in there. Um, maybe a milkshake if you're on a reducing plan. Just a pretty little pink thing. Get it over here. Pink, pink. Put, some, put a flower in there. Okay, that's a nice one. Now, of course, I realize this poor little guy here, the handle is a hot mess, and I'm going to get him in the light in just a minute. And he's missing his lid. He's a little lusterware teapot, and he would have come with a matching cream and sugar. My, let me back up. He would have had a matching cream and sugar to go with him. Yeah. Okay, the lid is gone. The handle is torn up. Why in the heck did I buy it? Take that handle off there and use him as a planter. Wouldn't he be adorable in somebody's kitchen with a succulent sticking out of there? Or even your little sweet and low packets can fit down in there. Um, or use it as a spoon rest. He has no damage other than his lid is missing. Look at that little tail. Actually, it's not that little. And we see he is dripping because he's been washed. There's the made in Japan on the bottom. And this puts him in the era between the wars, I like to say. So we're from 1921 uh, to 1941, uh, somewhere in there. I think he'd be great repurposed as a planter or some other such thing. What would you do with him? Let's ask that, okay? What if you stuck a light bulb in there? Well, I don't know about that. All right, this is when it really pays to study your depression glass patterns. Uh, this is a very popular one, and a lot of people, and we've seen it before many times on this program, if we look closely, there is the little dancing ballerina. You see her in there? So this is referred to as cameo or ballerina by collectors. Anchor Hawking made it. And we see this almost always in green. That's right. This is the first piece I've ever bought in yellow, and yellow is a lot harder to find and a little more expensive. Uh, this will this is worth more than the duplicate in green. Yeah. So uh, you'll find an extensive line in green, but uh, fewer pieces were actually pumped out in the yellow color or topaz. I think Hawking just went ahead and called it yellow. So it's a two tab handled uh, platter there in that 1930s pattern. Nice to find it in the yellow color. And then we all know what that is. <laughs> so uh, Pyrex butter print. It's a little uh, 470 something, whatever it is. Can't remember. Can't see it. But we know what that is. We've seen them a million times. And that's listed. Yeah, all this stuff is currently listed. I forgot to tell you that. It's all currently listed. Here's a wonderful TNS Handmade. That's the company. Get it down here. You see the inside. TNS. Yeah. Handmade. Handy made is what I meant to say. Handy made. Made in USA. Handy made, spelled M A I D, of course, because it's handy to the maid who's working in the kitchen. All right. So it's uranium. There's uranium in it. It is depression glass. It contains uranium. Notice I did not call it uranium glass. I called it depression glass that happens to contain uranium and it glows under a black light for those of you who like to display it. 
that way. It also came with a reamer. There's a little bit of a lip here, which you might not see, and a reamer set on this. You could ream your lemons or oranges. That reamer is gone, but you can find one that you can still fit down in there or just use it as it is. Amazingly, as a kitchen piece, there's no roughness to it and uh, there are no chips or cracks on it. And it really is in remarkably wonderful condition for a piece of kitchen depression glass. I love that thing. Uh, yeah. And you recognize, you say, ah, okay, let me see now. Now that's either Westmoreland mm, English Hobnail or it's Anchor Hawking's Miss America. How do you know the difference? Because these little hobnail things look identical on each pattern. Well, it's these rings up here. Hawking loved putting banded rings on everything. And you're not gonna see those rings on the Westmoreland pieces of English hobnail. So when we see these rings up here, we've got the Anchor Hawking little 10 ounce Miss America tumblers. I've got four of them. In crystal, nice. In pink, even better. The pink is more expensive, and um, but I, I, I really, I do like the pattern. Yeah. Okay, so four of those cute little things. There's no damage on these. And then a 1930s tidbit tray in chrome. This one is unmarked and it's got a nice embossed pattern and it's pierced around the edges. And the two trays measure eight inches in diameter. They are identical uh, size trays. And there it sits. Pass it around at your next break, at your next ladies' luncheon or gentlemen's luncheon, and serve on that pretty little thing from the 30s. And it's not scratched or dented. Very nice. Aha. Okay. What is it? You know what it is because we see these in the old curiosity shop all the time. Let's put it up on top of these plates. What a beauty is that one. Now let me get down to where we can really see it in the sunlight. Okay, you're right, it's a candy jar. Yeah, candy jar, candy box, candy jar, which looks like an apothecary jar. And remember, every single glass company in America were making candy jars like this in the 20s and 30s. It was one of the most popular gift items. Everybody had one and they looked the same. So you can drive yourself nuts trying to figure out which company produced uh, the particular one that you have. So I will normally just list it as a candy, box, candy jar. Now if you go Googling this, again, you'll find, as I just told you, uh, 10, 15 different uh, makers, glass companies, everybody. It's in beautiful gold, gold. Beautiful amber color. Look at that. I love the black painting enamel on it. And some of the glass companies who did have decorating rooms and they, they, they actually did this work in their, uh, right there in their factories. And this appears to be professionally done by the company that made it. So we have the lid which will come off. Put your candy corns down in there. And look at the beautiful color there on that enamel paint, the enamel work. We've got blue and a, and a rose color and then the gilding on it. Uh, that, this is one of the nicest, prettiest decor. I sometimes, you know, I don't particularly care for the way they're decorated. This one, boy, I care for that a lot. And I almost want to keep it, but I'm letting it go. And I'm not going to hold on to it until uh, the autumn season. 
Get out of there, Nat. Did you just see that Nat get in there? I don't know where he came from. Get out of there. Get out. Not want you on my depression. You know what? All right, we'll deal with you later. Your, uh, we have 13 plates here. They're eight inch salad plates, luncheon plates, and it's probably the most popular pattern by Cambridge, and you got it. It's called Rose Point. And there it is. There's the old Rose Point pattern. Now, the thing with the Rose Point is made from the mid 30s to the early 50s. You'll find Rose Point on a couple different blanks. Blank meaning the shape of the plate itself, not the etching. The etching is called Rose Point. I think this is the fifth, um, 3500 line. It's got the scat, it's got the edge with this little pierced, well, not pierced, a crimped decoration there around the edge of the plate, pressed decoration, you see that? And that's different from the 3400 line. Uh, so yeah, 13 of these. So, so hey, when there's 13 of something, everybody say it with me. Who gets to break one? Yeah, that's right, Uncle Henry. Uh, or Uncle Milton. I'm always blaming Uncle Milton and Uncle Henry. Um, so we can say a set of 12 with one extra. Mm -hmm. You know, Aunt Marcia breaks things too. I don't know why we're always picking on the uncles. Is that gnat still in there? It is. That's bugging me. Now, some of you will uh, not find this, uh, well, some of you will find that in poor taste, and I apologize if you do, but it's made by McKee glass company and it is called where is it it's called their their tumble up Woo! no bottoms up okay and it's a shot glass made of a well, they're gonna call they call this a, a uh, caramel colored glass and this will glow under a black light I'll stick a picture in here there is uranium in it McKee had a patent for this I think in 1932 and um, they came originally with a coaster. Those coasters are usually gone, so there's no coaster on this one. But these are heavily reproduced. Now the idea is, of course, you get your shot of whatever it is you're supposed to be drinking and you gotta drink the whole thing before you put the glass down because it'll spill out. Uh, so we have the embossed woman on there holding on to the sides of the glass. Looks like she's got a swim cap on. And, uh, okay, bottoms up. Now, you want to look very closely on these right underneath of the feet at the bottom. We have the patent number. Do you see that? Patent 77725. That's not on the reproductions. Okay, so if you're ever out and you see one of these, look to see if the patent number is on there. That right there is a little bubble that's part of the it's just an imperfection from when the glass was made. So that makes this the real thing. I have, uh, there are, aren't, there's no damage on it, no chips or cracks. And even though it doesn't have its uh, um, ashtray coaster base, these are still very sought after. And I have this listed as a buy it now price actually. And uh, so uh, from the 1930s. I never see these. I never find the originals. I find the reproductions, but I don't find the originals. Let's put you up there. Maybe you'll scare the gnat away. Um, now, let's take a look at this beautiful thing. Again, let me get down here where you can... Well, that's not exactly what I wanted to do. Move this here. And for the moment, we will put this right back up here. Okay, beautiful amber. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's amber. 
and that is lavender. I'm not sure what it looks like on your screen. Let me lift it up. It's a beautiful lavender, light lavender. Some would, are gonna to wanna to say amethyst and some are gonna to wanna to say purple. It's not sunglass. This has not been put out like a piece of EAPG in the sun where the manganese will uh, interact with the ultraviolet rays and turn the glass purple. This is the way this was made to look. And it's called a dahlia. It's a dahlia vase, circa 1930. And when you, if you go to, if you find something like this vase, just like the candy box over here, if you do a Google reverse image search on this, yeah, and uh, you're going to see vases like this pop up and you're going to see it attributed, most likely you're going to see someone attribute it to Tiffin, the Tiffin Glass Company. Well, okay, yeah, Tiffin did make Dahlia vases, an 8-inch, I think a 10-inch as well, but they aren't the only ones. I'm going to just give you an example of one company. Take a look here. Here's a picture of a vase that looks identical. Let's put them side by side, okay, or at least very close, yeah? Look at the picture on the right, and look at my vase here on the left. They're both eight inch vases, they're both Dahlia vases, but notice the one on the right is made by the United States Glass Company. Here's another picture of another one, also made by US Glass. Now, if we are really, if we get uh, precise with measurements and whatnot, we're probably gonna see that there is a slight difference in the mold, but the point that I'm making is, uh, you. It, it really is important, again, I think, to study your books and, and, and delve in a little bit deeper than just the first results that you see on the net. Because we can't say, I can't say that this is Tiffin or U.S. Glass or any other particular maker because just like those candy jars, they almost always look the same. So in my listing, I'll say that it's in the style of U.S. Glass and Tiffin and other companies that made vases like this. But without real scholarship, which I don't have, I'm not going to be able to tell you exactly which company made it. So it's beautiful. There's a little bit of a something going on there on inside right there. See, there's a little calcium deposit around the rim on the inside that you might be able to get that out. Sometimes it does come out. Very pretty. 10 inch uh, uh, or 8 inch, that one, Dahlia, with a cupped, called a cupped Dahlia vase. And uh, US glass, maybe, Tiffin, maybe. Here's another piece that I'm a little stumped on. Let's just go ahead and look at what we've got. On the foil sticker, we have Paul's gift wares. Couldn't find out much about that. Hand painted, okay, clean with a damp cloth, Epco, New York, EPPCO. Okay, that's fine, but actually, who made the glass? I don't know. It's almost like an opaline or a um, opalescent white glass. So we have some light that passes through. Semi-transparent. Beautifully hand painted, and it is a trinket dish, right, for the dresser top, for the vanity. And this is going to date to around 1930 or so, you know, the early 30s. Look at all the little points on the bottom. Not one is broken, not one has a flea bite, which is absolutely amazing for something like this to be unscathed after all of these years of Granny putting her uh, wedding ring in there every night. It's a beautiful piece, one that is rare, and you're not gonna find, you're probably not gonna find another one of these. Ah, you're probably not gonna find another one. Let's take this lid, which is beautifully hand painted, and put it back on there. This kind of reminds me of the Furlux glass, which was the what Beaumont called opaline 
glass that they made in during the Depression era. But I, I looked through several of my books and I really couldn't find any particular glass company uh, that, I, that I could actually say, you know, who made it. Because the glass is not signed and um, this Paul's Gifts up here is either an importer or a store or uh, a retailer, that kind of thing. But not who actually make, made the, the little piece. But isn't that gorgeous? Uh, these are the only things that are sold. They literally sold just before I went to do the video and I said, well, let me throw them in there anyway. I did put these on as a buy it now price. Um, porcelain Art Deco bathroom wall fixtures uh, with the outlet on one of those. And these are going off to a gentleman who does restoration of antique bathroom lighting fixtures so they, they sold and then this is also listed as a buy it now I think it's still available made in England probably from it's hard to tell the 30s into the 60s maybe something like that this is just uh, chrome plated and it's got an it's embossed the way the old picture frames used to be it's not silver plate or any or anything like that and this is pressed glass the decanters the stoppers match the decanters match it's a really nice looking caddy Kind of a waffle pattern there on the two decanters and for turn this upside down we see made in england on the bottom and also made in england is printed down here somewhere on the metal caddy as well so that's a pretty piece and certainly functional ready to use it's nice and clean and i'm going to back up and say that's it i don't know what your favorite was but i am in love with this little trinket box you know I like the porcelain uh, bathroom fixtures, the, the Dahlia cupped vase. Oh my goodness, this is out of this world. And what can we say about that? And put that right back up there. I'm still trying to scare that gnat away. Just everything here was so much fun to find and to share with you. And it's for sale in the old curiosity shop. Next thing coming up, the only thing that's not ready is this caramel hanging light fixture with the caramel slag glass i'm still working on this but that's going to be ready uh really soon okay good folks that's it thanks for watching tell me what you think what you like what your thoughts are about anything that you saw on the windowsill here today and it was a lot of fun to show you you can go look at it in the old curiosity shop if you'd like place a bid the link to the shop is in the description box just below this video that's all for now, folks. Thanks for watching. Wait for the cat. And so long for now. Well, Jiminy Cricket, just as I'm about to film a thrift haul, and I had a blaze of light on the windowsill, a storm comes up. Well, I'll just have to delay my filming. But it hasn't uh, affected the men over here, the men and the women working on the building across the street. They are up to, well, let's see if there's one more floor to go. That's it. So you see, I don't lose my view at all. I still get the beautiful skyline and boy, here comes the storm. All right. Boy, I hope they get that wood in place.